Hey, welcome back to Meet the Masons. Um, we have another segment, of course, today is TGIF, Thank God It's Friday. And we actually have some questions. I'm looking across the, the hall because uh, Kiara's office is across the hall and um, she's working on something else. But nonetheless, um, we will be going through some questions that we had in the past and some new questions that we have um, in just a few moments. But I wanted to to bring something up that we've been dealing with um, with our family, our life, and where, where we are now. Uh, thank everybody for checking us out, for um, expecting on Up TV. Uh, we were live on the news, West 2 News, um, and we've been doing so many different things, have new access to so many platforms, and it's just been amazing. Like, literally, one day you're feeling like you're not doing anything, the next day it's like, whoa, what is this? Totally amazing, super grateful, and we're looking for more opportunities and um, and and they're, they're here and they're coming. Um, but what I've been finding is like, in the middle of all these amazing opportunities, as soon as you're done, your satisfaction is, is like depleted. And it's not really found in those things. Like before we got on TV, it's like, oh, you know what? This is awesome. I can't believe that what we've been expecting and what we've been looking forward to is actually coming to pass. Cause we actually had that in our um, one of our confessions and in our journal that one day we want to be on TV and I would always say, oh yeah, we're gonna be on TV. We would actually put our um, YouTube videos on our own TV, smart TV, just so we can get the feeling. And then it literally happened. Um, we were on expecting the the TV show. It came on 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. And it was the same videos that we used to um, use as, as our prop for what it would be like on TV. They said, hey, you know what, we wanna use the footage that you've already recorded and we want to put that on TV. So exactly what we pray for, exactly what we confess happened. And it's been like that with so many situations. For an example, the house that we live in, um, the cars that we drive, the, the jobs that we have, we're all a part of that same process. But it's like after you get the promise, you're stuck in this position of, I'm grateful because this is what I wanted, but I'm also unsatisfied because now that I'm here, I want something more. It's like, when am I ever going to be satisfied? And one thing our pastor said is like, you know, it's it's never going to be a position where you're completely satisfied from a promise because our satisfaction comes from pleasing God. And at the end of the day, like that's what we're created to do. And that's how we live. Like we live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And we were created to please God. That's why everything was created. So for an example, um, great example my pastor used, he, he, uh, he mentioned that if you have a cup, let's say you have a teacup and you have this teacup and you're pouring coffee in it and the teacup just slides off. It's like, I don't want to be used for coffee. I'm a teacup. Or you have a cup and you have Kool-Aid in it and then you go and you say, you know what? I want to put some pretzels in this cup and it slides over. I'm a Kool-Aid cup. I don't want to be used for pretzels. It's like, hold on. You can't tell me what you're going to be used for. I own you. And us being believers, we believe that we've been bought, bought with a price. And that price is making Jesus our Lord. So if he's our Lord, he has the right to tell me what to do. And with me doing what he tells me to do, in that I'm fulfilled, in that I'm pleased. And it's funny because that doesn't mean that I can't have fun in life. Like we do have fun. We go on vacations, we travel, we do so many different things. We get to see our family in town, out of town. We've been around the world as you see in some of our vlogs and we're gonna keep going to new places. But after you get back from the trip, it's like, ah, oh, I gotta go work again. Ah, oh, I gotta go clean up. But you just prayed for a job and you got a job. And I'm saying you as in me. Um, you just prayed for a job, you have the job and you're not satisfied. You prayed for this house, you're living in it, and you're mad because you have to clean it up. You prayed for these cars, and you're driving them, but you don't want to take them to the car wash. Jared, what's wrong with you? It's like, oh man, you know what? My satisfaction is off, but it's always off when I'm focused on promises or focuses, focusing on things instead of who gave me those things. So for an example, if I give, um, Kiara something for her birthday. I'm not worried about how much it costs. I'm not worried about um, where it came from. I know that I like, I enjoy giving her gifts that she will enjoy. And that pleases me to give her a gift. So even if she doesn't like the gift, 
I'm pleased that I gave her a gift. So that's my pleasure is to give her a gift. And for God, it's like, hey, he's pleased when we obey him. He's pleased when we serve him. He's pleased when we walk by faith. So if I obey him, I serve him and I walk by faith, that's pleasing to him. Now I get the overflow of that because I still get to do things that I want. I still get to go places where I want to go, eat what I want to eat, do certain things, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, my main focus and at the beginning of the day, my main focus is, did I please God? And in that, that's where my satisfaction lies. Because if I say, oh, it's my wife, you know, she's so fine. Uh, she loves me and she takes care of me and she's a great mom. She's a great wife. She's a great businesswoman. All those things, which she is. But even in the midst of having all those characteristics, it's like you can find yourself being dissatisfied. Like, man, did I make the right choice? Was I really supposed to marry her? And yes, to all those questions. Yes, I did make the right choice. Yes, I really was supposed to marry her. But in those moments, it's like, is this is this the pinnacle of everything I have? Is this the pinnacle of, of what it's supposed to be like being married? And no, it's not. And you're never going to reach the max. There's always going to be somebody somewhere else that just went on a better vacation, that somebody somewhere else that just had a better promotion, somebody somewhere else that had a better experience with their kids, whatever the case may be. But in the midst of all these transitions and phases of life, find contentment with pleasing God and let everything else be everything else. Doesn't mean you don't have fun. Doesn't mean you don't go out to the movies, go on vacation, take time with your family and friends. Do that. That's a part of the process. But in the process, don't get it twisted on which one is really going to satisfy you. Because at the end of the day, if you miss a promise as being satisfaction and pleasing God as satisfaction, you'll always be disappointed. And that's what we found. It's like we have so many new platforms and more are coming. But with these new platforms, we can't get that twisted with how we got there. If God promises, hey, we're going to take you from here to there. Um, we have a call to make lives better, to take the net and do different things. It's like we're going to do that. As we're doing these, the reason why we're even focusing on this is because God said, hey, you know what? I have greater things for you. And as we're pursuing those greater things, we're not necessarily waiting in expectation of, oh, once I get this thing, I'm ta-da, I made it. No. Hey, God, what, what next do you want me to do? Should I be nice to this person? Should I take care of this? Should I pay for their bill? Should I, what, what next? That's where my satisfaction is in pleasing him, not in doing what he told me to do. As far as, oh, I did it, look at me now. Because you can always look, there's always going to be somebody that doesn't care. But my satisfaction is not in wins or losses. It's if, it's if I obeyed and did I do all that he told me to do. And then let all the other chips fall where they may. But nonetheless, that was the TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. We are thankful for all the opportunities that we have and more is coming. But in the midst of these uh, thankful moments, it's like, hey, don't get it twisted. None of these things will satisfy you. No matter how many times you wash your car, it's still going to get dirty again. No matter how many times you clean your house, it's still going to get dirty again. No matter how many times, whatever you want to pick, you go to work, you're still going to have to go to work again for something. Now, not everybody has to go to work, but you have to do something some at some point in time. You're always going to have to fill your life with something, but make sure you take time to intentionally fill your life with God so that way that that hole of satisfaction is filled so that way you're not empty in a crowd of people. You can be in a crowd of people and feel so alone because it's like, oh man, you know, I, I finally went platinum. I finally won a Grammy. I finally made a million dollars. Now I need to make two. Now I need to make 10. And when we make millions, we're going to, it's going to be great, but we know our satisfaction is not in the money. Our satisfaction is pleasing God. So hope you all enjoyed. Um, Thank God it's Friday. We have a couple questions to answer in just a couple moments. So I'm going to get Kiara out of her office in a few minutes and see if she's done with whatever she might be working on. And then we will be back for Q&A. Hasta luego. Hey, time for Q&A. Say Yay, hi, River. Say hi. Hi. Hello. You're so cute, girl. <laughs> okay, let's get right to these questions. All right. If I miss any questions, please let us know. It's literally been a long time. So <laughs> the first one comes from Miss GT Fab Girl 2 G. <laughs> she says, can you do a video on being a stay-at-home mom? 
Also, do you plan on returning back to work once River turns one year old? Um, doing a video on being a stay-at-home mom. I am actually working on something pretty cool concerning that. But I may do a vlog on a day in the life of like a stay-at-home mom. And you guys yeah. can see um, kind of what we do each day. Although it kind of varies each day. But yeah, definitely can do that. But I am working on some stay-at-home mom stuff. So that is cool. Be on the lookout for that. Um... Do I plan on returning back to work once River turns one years old? No, I do not. Not to a nine to five. But, you know, we're led by the Lord. So whatever he wants me to do, I will do. But right now we have plans on us um, staying home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number or question number two. <laughs> she's by the window, so she's very entertained right now. Um... From Tay Thorne, or I'm sorry, Tay Thom. Also, how has becoming parents changed you guys' life? Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Um, it's been awesome. It helps us to remember how much more time it is in a day. It helps you be more productive because, like, your responsibilities don't go anywhere. You literally, like, it's leveling up to... to um, the new assignment of being a parent so it's it's awesome because like i still have to be a husband i still have to be um here and be present i still have to go to work still have to do all these other things but it makes you more efficient in those other areas because you can't leave anything on the back burner now and nor that we could in the past but it helps with efficiency i would say it's like the main thing um also helps you like be more prayerful because now it's not just um, worrying about adult things. It's like, all right, Lord, I thank you for taking care of my kid as as she's growing up, um, helping her with her confidence and her um, her awareness of you, um, to, that she grows into the knowledge of you at a young age, which obviously we have a role to play there. But also it helps us to be more prayerful and more practical, uh, more playful as well, because a lot of times when you grow up, um, you're adults now and nothing's fun, but that's not true. I um, mean, it's a reminder to like play with the simple things. Plans change. Um, bring up extra pair of clothes because you might get some poop on you, you know. So it helps you be more aware of possibilities and look forward to like make fun of the things. Like uh, River's first day, um, she pooped on me. And I'm like, I didn't plan for that. But uh, hey, take a picture of the poop, you know. So yeah. it's, it's fun stuff. Yes. I would say for me, um life honestly it just looks completely different like it's just not the same but it's so much better because we have a baby who's always here <laughs> so it's not daycare or babysitting i know like she's always with us so um just our priorities the decisions that we make even like grocery shopping or always double check and make sure we have everything that we need um, before we leave the house it's just always being prepared so we always think about that but i like that jared said we have more fun because I think we do. Honestly, it makes you become more playful. I don't think I was as much of a playful person. Look at her. <laughs> as much of a playful person. Although I was silly and goofy, but she like is really active. So it just brings out a different side of you in your marriage. And to watch like your spouse play with your child and stuff is really cool. But um, it's more responsibility too. So... Sometimes we're just like, man, I'm tired. All right, it's your night. It's your night to be with her. Like, <laughs> this is your diaper this time. So, you know, sharing those responsibilities. It's funny. And you just really have to communicate with your spouse when um, when you need to share those responsibilities or when you're just too tired. Like, Jared took like a four to five hour nap after church <laughs> up until bedtime. And it was like, hey, his body really needed that, that time to sleep. No, um, that has happened once. Yes. Twice. Only yeah, no, normally not. we did it twice when me and you both went to sleep at the same time. But since River was born once, mm -hmm. now that was like, whoa, neither one of us expected that. But at the same time, Kiara was gone. So it's not like I just slept on them completely. She yeah. had plans. She would, No, you was out with your friends. You're talking about when we got home. Yeah, but I'm just saying that was a part of it. Yeah, yeah she wanted to leave that out. So... Yeah, it, it looks different, but it's more fun, honestly, and yeah. And, you know, they say the kids are so much more expensive. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're breastfeeding or whatever. I'm not breastfeeding. <laughs> it's just, I don't think. I thought that it was going to make such a, 
Um, like having a child was gonna put such a big dent in our budget, and I don't think it did. Uh, like maybe we do. We were just really blessed to have a lot of stuff for my baby shower. Uh, but um, yeah, not not that expensive. Not at this point in our life right now. Maybe when she starts asking for stuff, it'll be different. She so, asking for stuff already. Besides milk and food. No, she does ask for stuff. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. Um, last question is from Tiffany Gray. Ooh, actually, I didn't. Hopefully, I got all of it. Okay. She said, when you were pregnant with River, did you at any point wonder if you were going to be a good parent? Were you nervous knowing that you would have another human being relying on you for everything? Um, yeah, I think when I was pregnant, I was more so just focused on having the delivery that I wanted and getting her out safely and making sure she was safe and um, healthy. Mm hmm that was honestly my main priority when I was pregnant. But then afterwards, um, yeah, I had somewhat of an idea of what kind of parent I wanted to be. Um, and I never doubted that I was going to be a good parent. Like, I always aspired to be a good parent. I always aspired to do a good job for God. That's mainly the thing because I knew that River is the Lord's child first and foremost. So, um, he's lending me her and now it's my responsibility. And... I just look forward to it. So I never really doubted that I was going to be a good parent. And I pray that I am a good parent, that we're both good parents. What about you? Did you ever think about that? Um, it wasn't necessarily a doubt. It's more so stepping up to the challenge of what you expect and um, what's expected of you. Like if, if you're doing something and let's say you have your boss or supervisor, let's say that they come up to you and they say, hey, hold my briefcase real quick and it's wide open. And they have all this stuff and the wind starts blowing and you see papers start flying out. You grab those papers before they fly out. You hold their, um, their stuff because it's like, hey, this is my supervisor. This is my boss. I'm going to take care of their stuff. So when you look at your kid as, hey, this is God's kid before they're my kid. It's like, I'm going to take extra care. And I'm confident that I can take, take care of this because I know my relationship with you. And I know that... It's going to be okay. Yeah, winds may come, storms may blow, wherever the case may be. But I have enough with having you and what you've left me with, the, the power that you've given me to, to make this um, a great exchange. So it's been awesome. There's sometimes where it's like, man, am I being too harsh? Am I being too this, being too that? But then it's like, no, because your kids were tailored for you. So if you, I'm not sure if that was, what was that guy or girl asking the question? Okay. Um, if you're having children, they're yours. So it's like, it's, they're custom made for you. So you will be the best parent ever automatically because they are yours. And obviously they, like Kiara said, that they're, um, they're lended to you from the Lord. But um, but yeah, your kids are your kids and you're the best person to influence them, the best person to provide for them, the best person to nurture them. And if you, um, if you take it from that mindset that, hey, you know what? God wants me to do a good job and I want to do a good job for God that will take you so much farther because if you do it because mom and dad want me to do this or my aunts and uncles or my friends say, it's like you're doing it for them. But when you do it for God, you don't have to worry about other people's opinions or satisfaction or if they approve. But it's like, all right, I'm doing this for a bigger purpose. But yeah, um, to answer the question, it wasn't necessarily um, a long, long uh, time of am I going to be good at this? It's like, how soon can I start being good at it? Was more of the excitement, like, all right, I'm ready. Give me a chance. I'm, I'm gonna prove you right that I can do a good job. And yeah. it's been fun. Cool. Next question was: Were you nervous knowing that you would have another human relying on you for everything? Hey. Initially, when I was pregnant, no, I wasn't thinking about that at all. But after I had her, I was just like, wait, she needs us for. Everything. Everything. I mean, every meal she's going to have is going to come from me. And I think that gave me anxiety, especially when breastfeeding was um, very Tough rough for me. Yeah. And if you haven't seen my breastfeeding journey video, I will try to tag that somewhere. But um, that was kind of nerve wracking in the beginning. I was just like, man, man, this is a lot. So that was hard. But then eventually it was just like, I'm her mom. We're yeah. her parents. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, I get the opportunity to do this for River, like my superstar. So, we're excited. Um, I forgot to list another question. It's from the same person. She also asks, was surrendering your all to God extremely difficult and challenging? 
even though you know it's the best thing for you to do absolutely <laughs> we want what we want like we're just we're selfish people we have our own plans and um sometimes they don't always line up with what god she intended for us to do yes yeah, she wants to get down be Bye -bye. free my child have fun <laughs> go we can go <laughs> i love when she looks back like for our approval it's so cute anyway um surrendering our all to god yes it is extremely difficult sometimes and challenging but like you said when i know that god's will and god's plan for me is better than what my plan is then it's easier to do it it's just like okay i'm just gonna let this go and then trust that what i'm believing you for or what i'm trusting you for is gonna come to pass and it's gonna be far greater than what i could have planned so yeah that would be my answer to that what about you um i would say that it wasn't necessarily hard because it's like it's like once you've already made a decision you don't have to go back to the same decision so we already decided to surrender to god mm -hmm. and it's not like oh man i gotta choose again now yes every day do you have to continue in that choice yes you do but um for example if you if you accept a job is it tough to go to work yeah you could say it's tough to go to work but if you love your job and they pay you great and you got great hours and you love your coworkers and all these different things. It's like, even though it might be tough, and I'm not saying tough as in a, in a bad way, but it might be tough to, like, man, it's Monday. Ah, it's Monday. Wednesday, is hump day. Yeah, that's true. It could be tough. But if you like the environment, you like the benefits, you like all these things, you'll press past that. So it's not necessarily as tough. It's just not choosing to decide on that again. So with God, it's like we already know that there's benefits to serving him. There's benefits to um, following him. And even though sometimes it may seem like delayed benefits, like you got to wait two weeks for your check. You might have to wait two weeks for um, the realization of that promise or whatever case may be. But you know there's a process to it. So because we've already opted in and we decided that this is how we're going to live, it's just like adding more stuff to the cart. Um, and if you're pushing the cart, you're not carrying all your groceries. You're just pushing the cart. So we added something to our cart and we just keep keep moving. So it's um, it's been pretty cool. Because I'm not carrying this stuff. <laughs> God carries us and we just woo, keep walking. Yes. So this is this is a long video. But thank you guys for listening to us. Um, we're glad to be back with TGI Fridays. And we look forward to seeing you again. We'll see you on Say Tuesday. Bye -bye. And we love you. Say bye. Say bye bye. Say hasta luego. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye -bye. <laughs> You're so cute. Say bye bye. Daddy loves it, baby.